That's exactly what I want to see on your test. Mm -hmm. I want to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and step number seven I want it written out. I want it, there is enough, don't just say there is enough evidence. I want you to know what you just proved. There is enough evidence to support the claim that the mean level of soda is greater than 12 ounces. So what this guy did, or what you did if this is your job, you went in, you collected 39 cans, you sampled them, you did all your statistics correctly, you came down here, you go, hey boss, we're giving way too much soda, we need to reconfigure these machines because I'm 99% sure, that's pretty sure, right? Not 50-50, I'm 99% sure that we're giving away too much soda in these cans, lower it a little bit, lower it by half and see if it's soda, or lower it by uh, a tenth of an ounce, and then redo the test and pick out another 39 cans, see if you're, you're on the money. Does that make sense? Feel okay about this? You sure? Now I'm going to change the problem just slightly. What we're going to do is say, what if the guy had beforehand just said this? Said, well, I didn't do my sample, right? I, I just, I just want to know if, uh, if we're either above or below. So without even doing a sample, what if we change the wording a little bit and say instead of the claim that, so this all stays the same, 39 cans, 12.11 ounces, segregation is 0.27 ounces. Test the claim that the mean, level, mean volume of soda is not equal to 12 ounces. So we're just testing whether we're giving away too much or not enough soda. So change your problem right now is not equal to 12 ounces. And I want to see how this affects our problem. So that's our change. Still with a 0 0.01 significance level. 0 0.01 significance level. You alright so far? Okay. Hey, does our claim change? The claim. The claim is the volume of soda is not equal to. Does this mean not equal to? Oh, we're going to have to change that then. What's that? How do we write that then? Not equal with the dash. So, not equal to. What's the opposite of not equal to? Well, that's kind of easy. Equal to. That's kind of nice. Is this still our h sub 0? Yes. Sure. Is this one still our h sub 1? Yes. Okay. Hopefully you didn't erase the last problem, right? You're just uh, adding on to that, right? Okay, good. I hope not. <clears throat> so our h sub 0 is still mu equals 12, but, but this one, we're, we're noticing that, well, there, there's no longer that symbol. Now instead of that, we have a, a that. Does that change anything in the future of our problem? That changes the type of test we're doing. Instead of a one tail, a right tail test, we're now going to have a two tail test. So the not equal sign is going to split. And here's what that does. It splits up your significance into two different areas, right? Saying now you have to be further away to prove this, this null hypothesis wrong. We're going to see how that affects us. Okay, is our significance level still 0.01? Yes. Is our test statistic still 2.544? Yes. None of that changes. Yeah, the only thing that really changes here is our, our claim and, and opposite, so our, our null and alternative, but that's going to change our picture dramatically. So when we take a look at our picture again, in step number five, I'm getting pretty good at that. Are you guys getting pretty good at that? Throw that nice little, again, knock that out of the park. Oh, yeah. So we, have, we got this, this picture again, but here our, our alternative hypothesis says, well, no, we're, we're not just a one-tail test anymore. We're not just a right-tail test. We've got a two-tail test. Can you tell me, if this is a two-tail test and our significance level is 0 0.01, is this area 0 0.01? No. How much is that area? How'd you get that? Because what we know is that this is alpha over 2. That's 0 0.005. 0 0.005 over there. And that means that on this side, we also have 0 0.005. You okay with that so far? Now, go back to your table for me, all right? Our degrees of freedom is still 38, so we're still down there at the 38, the 38 row. But I want you to look at that. 
I want you to look at the, the area and two tails, right? So it says, it says area and two tails. You know what, maybe I'll, no, I won't. If you do area and two tails, I wonder if that's even to catch that. Hopefully you guys can see that. If you do area and two tails, how much area is combined in the two tails? So that's where you're looking at. Look above that. Right above that, it says area in one tail. How much is the area in each one of those tails? So it does make sense there, right? The point zero 0.01, that's if you look at both tails combined. Point zero zero 0.005 says, oh, that's the area in each of my tails. Do you understand how to read the table correctly? Okay, so unlike chapter 7 where we just always use one of those. Now, it, it kind of switches depending on whether you have a left tail or right tail or a two-tail test. You got me? So we're going to follow that all the way down. We should be on this far left column, the point zero 0.01 that's in two tails combined or the point zero zero 0.005 that's in each of our tails, all the way down to the 30... Eighth, and we get what'd you get? Two point seven one two. Two point seven. Were you able to find the two point seven one two? Again, that's a critical value. What's this? Negative yeah, symmetrical. That makes it kind of nice, doesn't it? Hey, would you tell me which one of these three regions is the failed to reject region? Or which, which are the failed to reject regions, if you think there's two of them? Is this a failed to reject region? This would be saying it's way smaller than, than normal, and we're 99% sure on that. Uh, is this the failed to reject region? Yes, this is saying it's not far enough away for me to be 99% sure that my claim is wrong, all right? Or, I'm sorry, that my, my uh, null hypothesis is wrong. So basically, I'm not sure enough if my claim is true in our case, since it is alternative. So that's the fail to reject. This one's clearly a rejection region also, saying I'm giving away too much soda. So this is, I'm giving away too little soda, and I'm 99% sure of that. This is, I don't know whether I'm giving away too much soda or whether I'm running out of money. I, there's no way to tell that. This is, I'm giving away too much soda, and I'm 99% sure on that. Does that make sense to you? So that's what you, you do if you split up that, those tails. You're splitting up your significance to, it could be lower, it could be higher. That's the idea here. So a question, are we still going to reject the null hypothesis? Did our test statistic change? Yeah. Really? Oh, no. No, it didn't. Did our critical values change? Yeah. Absolutely. Because you're talking about two-tail tests, you're splitting the significance amongst our alpha amongst two tails. So are we going to still, like we did last time, reject the null hypothesis? No. Where's 2.54? Is it in the reject region or fail to reject region? Yeah, it's right here. That's in the fail to reject region, so we gotta change this. We're not gonna reject the null hypothesis anymore, we're gonna fail to reject it. What's that mean? Okay, so so it says uh, it says we failed to reject the null. We failed to reject this. We failed to reject that the mean equals 12. Does that mean that the, the mean does equal 12? You don't know. It, it doesn't prove it right, but it does, definitely doesn't prove it wrong. Does that make sense? So we're not sure. We don't know if we're giving away exactly 12 or if it is more or less than because we, we can't say either way that this was conclusive. We don't know for sure we're giving away too much even though it says 12.11 compared to 12. We don't know for sure because it's not significant enough. Uh, that's what happens when you do a two-tail test rather than a, a one-tail test. Did you guys see the difference between these examples? So it really does depend on what type of test you're using, doesn't it? It's kind of interesting how, how we can change our decision based on what our starting information is. So how would you augment this? There's only one extra word that you got to put up there. Because either way you look at it, there's not enough evidence to say anything. You can't support your claim. You can't support the opposite of that claim. That's it. Would you raise your hand if you're okay about our hypothesis testing? Yes. 